Good evening. It's a pleasure to, to see each one of you here at our February the 18th uh, Pitt County Board of Commissioners meeting. We appreciate each of you being here. Those who are viewing us by way of television, we would like to welcome you also. I will now call our meeting to order, and we will have our roll call. We shall now stand for our invocation by Commissioner Johnson and our pledge by uh, Commissioner Colson. Let us pray. For all the many blessings of life, we are truly grateful. We pray that Thou will be with this board this evening as we make decisions that will affect all the citizens of Pitt County that everything we do and say may be pleasing in thy sight. Amen. Amen. Thanks for playing, please. I, where is it? Oh, okay. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you have a motion to so approve the agenda? Second. second. Let's vote, please. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe anyone has signed up for public addresses. Okay. We will move on then to our item for report, and the first one is our manager's report. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, under the manager's report, a few things to report on. Uh, first is your next meeting dates for the month of March due to the NACA conference in Washington, D.C. That's the legislative conference. The, um, instead of the first and third Monday, it'll be the second and fourth, so it'll be March 11th and March 25th. Um, item B wanted to report concerning the Development Services Building. At the last meeting, I reported that, that um, due to some difficulties when we were doing the energy efficiency work over there for the Guaranteed Energy Savings Project, that we had to relocate those um, different departments over there to this campus. That building is now back open, and um, um, all the any of the Concerns or issues have been um, taken care of and baited, and we're pretty much by tomorrow should have all departments out operating as, as they were before. So that's a, a good news item. Um, item C wanted to, um, mm. in conjunction with the county attorney, wanted to um, ask her to report out on a final resolution to an ongoing matter we've had within the solid waste and recycling department, and I'd like to defer to the county attorney this one. It's just as a very brief update on the, the resolution of a, a, an old legal matter. Former solid waste director Joel Scales was sentenced in federal court last Wednesday for a period of 48 months um, where he will serve in federal prison and three years supervised probation upon release. Restitution in favor of the county was awarded in the amount of $515,612.18, payable in installments of $500 per month beginning 60 days after his release from prison. The details of that file remain sealed um, due to Mr. Scales' cooperation with federal investigators on unrelated matters. One other item, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I wanted to recognize um, Kate Moser at the end of the, the um, desk tonight, the podium. She is um, our deputy clerk to the board. She's been with us um, going on four months, and she's here to help to observe and to um, watch Kimberly take minutes in case at some point in the future where she would need to um, to do that, so we'd like to welcome Kate to the meeting tonight. Very That's good. Fine. The next item is our performance measurements, and I believe you're going to report on that. Yes. You have um, before you tonight, or you've been provided a copy of it, The our next report. This is semi-annual on the performance measurement. This is the blue-bound document that may not have been um, distributed. Um, we do have these available. This is our um, eighth you're doing this. Dwayne's going to give some highlights of the document that uh, we'd like to share with you. Okay. Uh, as uh, the manager stated, uh, this performance management project represents uh, eight and a half years of data um, into our detailed reporting process and reporting on performance <clears throat> performance measurements. This is volume number 17 uh, that has been issued. And as you know, these reports are generated at mid-year and at the end of the year. Each quarter, each department uh, reports on those objectives that they set at the uh, beginning of the budget cycle. What we did, rather than go through the entire document, 
was just to pull out some of the highlights uh, by each functional area within <clears throat> county government. Uh, under general government, we just highlight uh, the securing of uh, the financing for the guaranteed energy savings project. Um, also in the uh, Board of Elections under general government, uh, for your uh, uh, benefit of knowing as well as the public, uh, they had an annual target that uh, at least 20% of registered voters would vote in the last election, and actually 69% of registered voters uh, voted in the last election. <clears throat> Under public safety, which is inclusive of our sheriff's department, uh, detention center, emergency management, communications, 911, um, uh, they had a domestic violence case clearance rate of 95.5%. Their annual target is 92%. And again, remember, these are mid-year uh, <clears throat> statistics, uh, but uh, we, we offer the annual targets so you can see that for many of these, they've exceeded their performance uh, expectations. Uh, for emergency medical dispatch, uh, they answer calls in within 20 seconds, 99.2% of the time, and they had a, a target of 95%. So to exceed that uh, to the tune of 99.2% was a very good performance. Under the area of economic and physical development, um, it was uh, we have it on record that over 200 jobs uh, because of uh, work directly by the Industrial Development Commission, um, working with existing industry in Pitt County, over 200 jobs were created. We had a target of 100, at least 100 new jobs from existing uh, industries to be created within the county. Also, uh, under the umbrella of the planning department, uh, they report that six Pitt County homes have been rehabilitated through uh, community development program, um, and they'll continue that work into the second half of the fiscal year. Under human services, which is uh, veterans affairs and social services, public health, uh, over $2.6 million of total uh, benefit amounts for new claims to veterans and their families have been awarded. Uh, their annual target is $4 million, so they're more than halfway uh, to their goal at the midpoint of the fiscal year. And uh, within the health department, we highlight that there have been more than uh, 2,100 HIV tests that were performed uh, by the health department as part of their community outreach to high-risk individuals. And there, you'll see their annual target is 35, at, at least 3,500 tests be done. So again, exceeding uh, more than half of their annual target uh, at the midway point in the year. And finally, under environmental protection, uh, more than 20 uh, in the solid waste and recycling, more than 20,000 tons of materials have been recycled. They had an annual target of 36,000 tons. So again, uh, exceeding that. And um, the last thing we highlight is that uh, in our soil and water department, that they uh, provided technical assistance to 64 governmental agencies and 147 agricultural Customers. So again, these are just some of the measurements. Uh, this is a very uh, detailed report. I encourage you to, to um, look through it. Also invite the public if anyone is interested. Uh, this uh, full report is available in the clerk to the board's office. They can also uh, find it in the finance office. Uh, we'll have a copy, of, make a copy available to you or the public as well. Any questions? Any questions of Mr. Holder? If not, do I have a motion? We approve the report. So move. So move. Second. Second. Uh, any questions? Any comments? Let's vote. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Is uh, the next <laughs> item on our agenda is <laughs> our January 2013 tax collection report, and Mrs. Booker is going to present that. Good evening. Good evening. The um, January 2013 Pitt County Combined Collection Rate for real and personal property and registered motor vehicles is 91.75, which is the same rate as that for the same period one year ago. Tax Administration continues to pursue all outstanding taxes using the necessary enforcements available through the North Carolina General Statutes including wage garnishment, bank attachment, sheriff levy, rent levy, and North Carolina, North Carolina debt set-off program and in-rim foreclosures. Any questions of Mrs. Booker? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the report. I say move. Second. Second. 
Let's vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is our monthly financial report. Uh, Mr. Hover is back up again. Hello again. Um, before you uh, enclose, uh, included in your agenda packet, you have the uh, monthly financial report for the general fund as of January 31st, 2013. This report represents seven months of fiscal, activi fiscal year activity or approximately 58.33% um, of the fiscal year. Um, happy to report that at the end of January, we still uh, continue to recognize a positive net difference of revenues and excess of expenditures of $20,474,845.95 as compared to at this point in the fiscal year last year, fiscal year 12, we were at 19, we had a positive net difference of $19,805,918.14. Our, our net difference this year is approximately 3.38% higher uh, this fiscal year uh, than the prior fiscal year. So we continue to uh, track in a, in a positive direction. Any questions of Mr. Holder? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept that report. So me. Let's vote. Thank you, Mr. Holder. The next item is a report from our Pitt Community College. And our, there he is. I didn't see you there behind the post. <laughs> Welcome. Appreciate you coming before us this evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. Commissioners, for allowing me to come and talk with you a little bit about Pitt Community College. And uh, I don't have much of a PowerPoint to show to you. I want to talk to you about some things that are going on campus. I am passing out a few materials to you, and I will uh, mention those as I go through the presentation. Uh, first off, it was interesting to hear uh, Mr. Holder's uh, report on employment. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to serve on re the Region Q Workforce Development Board because I'm able to network with people in this region and find out a lot more information about uh, employment and uh, trends in this area. And I'm really pleased to say that compared to a year ago, uh, we have 85,327 uh, employed people in this area and our workforce, and that's up over a thousand compared to this time last year. Our uh, unemployment rate is also down significantly. Uh, still not good, but better than it was. Uh, we're out of double digits. It's a slow recover recovery, obviously. Uh, and what we're seeing at Pitt Community College in response to this is a very great interest, not only on the part of students, but on the parts of companies in taking advantage of our services, and we're doing everything we can to respond, both with short-term and long-term training programs. Uh, that's been really the thing we're most busy with right now. Uh, recently, perhaps you heard about a Golden Leaf grant that we received uh, in conjunction with Wayne Community College. We received $1 million. That is for training for companies like ASMO, NACO, the Roberts Company, and AutoCAD, and advanced manufacturing. Uh, advanced manufacturing is very much alive in North Carolina. And I want to tell you that we are uh, competitive in that area. And I know you've heard from Economic Development Commission about activities. The community college system are a major partner in that effort not just to get new companies in, but to allow current companies to expand. Uh, we're also meeting, we just met last week, with representatives from DSM and Metrics about how we can uh, expand upon the needs in our pharmaceutical, our contract pharmaceutical uh, operations here in Pitt County. Uh, those have been very promising uh, meetings so far. And I think that combined with the career readiness certificate that we're facilitating in this area, that is an instrument I think I explained to you in the fall that will allow employers to assess the incoming abilities in a number of key areas of uh, people who are in the workforce. And we're facilitating its uh, use within the 
public school system too, which is giving those students an idea of where they need to work hardest in to prepare themselves for a lot of the hands-on, the career and technical type positions that we will have open in the future. Now, I want to stress to you that we are working hard on responding to this continuing issue of underemployment in our area, not just because of the desires of our companies and our employers, but it's, it's got a real human side to it, too. Uh, we are seeing students of all ages and backgrounds enrolled in programs at PCC. And, you know, the, the human side, I think, was underscored recently in an article in the News and Observer where uh, the person who's in charge of uh, the Poverty Center for the UNC uh, Law School was remarking about the challenges, particularly in eastern North Carolina, where we have too many families on food stamps without health insurance, and facing a future without the skills they will need to fully exercise their potential. Uh, that is a very real need, and I know you're aware of that, and we're doing everything we can to provide access to our educational system, and we're seeing a tremendous response. Uh, that's why you have a comprehensive community college in Pitt County because we are responding immediately to the, the very real human needs, and we are determined to make the most of the state and county investments that you and our state legislators are allowing us to make on your behalf. Now, this right now, our, our enrollments are doing quite well. The, uh, the folder that I sent out to you here, and if you want to just take a look at this for a second, uh, this is a profile of last year's performance, not this year, uh, but it's quite encouraging, and you can see that the total enrollments, both curriculum and uh, non-credit enrollments, are over 23,000. That was for the last year. That's 11-12. 12-13 is clicking along very well. We started our spring term uh, this semester with uh, a little bit over 6 percent higher than we were this time last year. In the fall, we were 7 percent up compared to a year ago. So we're definitely seeing a response to our credit programs, but that's just part of the, of the picture. It's the non-credit, the short-term uh, training programs that we're really seeing a tremendous response to. Also, I want to point out to you on this folder, uh, we've inserted these little cards. Uh, you may notice these cards that are in the little thing there. That is, uh, we're trying our best to network with our alumni. And we've got Ashley Smith, who's doing a great job in heading up that effort. You'll notice here that we are on Facebook and Twitter, and we are responding to alumni in whatever way we can. We had a great rally last week, and we're seeing more activity and, and identification of Pitt Community College, including uh, providing job networks so that it's not just a feel-good connection, it's one that's useful <coughs> for them. Uh, the, uh, the enrollment, as I said, is over 23,000 students currently, and uh, we're continuing to see an increase in the number of degrees that we're offering to, that we're um, providing. It's not just students that are enrolling, it's students that are completing degrees and certifications. We're up 11 percent compared to this time last year, so that's significant. Now, I know you've heard many times about the cost effectiveness of Pitt Community College, and we're, we're proud of that. But I'll have to say that we are challenged at this point as we add programs and try to serve as many students as we can. Uh, we are raising funds through our Pitt Community College Foundation, and perhaps you've heard about our Dancing with the Stars event. Uh, that'll be on March 7th uh, at Rock Springs, and we hope that you will support that. Uh, it's a great effort that will allow us to provide more financial support for our students. Uh, we know that uh, the resources that we receive are uh, well used, and we want to do everything we can to uh, stretch them and make them available to more students. I also wanted to call your attention, though, could I have the slides that I brought uh, showed to the uh, commissioners and across the uh, waves to those in the audience. I wanted to uh, do a little uh, context building for you 
on how the community college compares with other educational sectors in the state. Uh, you'll see in this slide in front of you that we have, and, and there's copies of these slides, by the way, in your, uh, in your brochures, uh, that we have seen among the community colleges since 2007 when the recession began over a 27 percent increase in enrollment within the community colleges. Now, actually, at Pitt Community College, this number has been closer to 35 percent because we have seen proportionally uh, a bigger increase. Uh, but the state funding obviously has not been able to keep pace with that. And we know that, like all state agencies, that we will continue to look for efficiencies and cut where we can. But the next slide I wanted to call your attention to, could I see the next slide, uh, is a, a very telling one. And that is one that, oops, okay, let's see. yeah, this one. This is one that compares the per student funding that we receive with that that is received by the public schools and with the universities. And you can see that there's a significant deficit there. This has been going on for some time, but of course it's exacerbated by the growth within the community college system. Uh, we're about 30 percent less per student than the public schools and far less than the universities. Uh, this has resulted in an overall decrease that's substantial uh, since the recession occurred. And I just wanted to make sure you were aware of this that we are doing our best under these circumstances to serve the students uh, enrolled. Uh, I want to thank you personally for what you've done uh, for Pitt Community College in helping us uh, put up new buildings on the campus. The Russell Classroom Building is being very extensively used, as is the Construction Industrial Technology Building. And we have been uh, successful in working with the North Carolina Department of Transportation to help us with some of the real crowding and traffic problems that we have on campus. That's been a great success at the beginning of this semester. Now pedestrians don't have to take their life in their hands when they try to cross Reedy Branch Road. And uh, many visitors to our campus who have seen these facilities have been impressed at the learning environments that they're, they're providing for our students. Now, I have to also state that even with the new additions of the buildings, we are still the most crowded of all 58 community colleges in the, in the state. That is certainly a dubious distinction, but we are doing everything we can to diversify our offerings, both through online and weekend offerings. Uh, we're looking at expanding classes in the Farmville area and doing what we can to utilize the facilities at our, at our hand. But we are seeing, especially in the biotechnology program that is operated out of the uh, old prep shirt factory, the tech <coughs> center north of the river, that it has far exceeded its capacity and we have growing demand that's not being realized there. So we, we will do what we can to serve the needs of our area, but I guess my bottom line is we're being stretched significantly to do that. In summary, I wanted to let you know that Pitt Community College is doing well. Uh, we're thriving in this uh, competitive environment and we're doing what we can to serve the econom economic needs of our area. We've seen a growth of over 5 percent, close to 6 percent this year in both credit and non-credit programs. And I think we have a bright future and uh, I'm just proud to be the leader of Pitt Community College and continue to serve <coughs> the needs of our area. I answer any questions if you have any. Uh, and uh, thank you for allowing me to make this, these remarks thank to you. you. Anyone have any questions? Uh, Commissioner Hammond. Yeah, Dr. I said, uh, what are you saying that you're using the Russell building, the new Russell building? Is, what, what purpose is it, is it being used for? It's being used every square inch of it. Uh, the every, program, all the whole building? It is. The, uh, the programs that are based there include mathematics, uh, human services, criminal justice, uh, early childhood education, uh, but we offer a variety of other classes as well, nurse assisting, and so it is uh, probably one of the busiest places on campus. Uh, that parking lot that we have there is not nearly big enough, and we're doing what we can to expand our parking availability. Uh, I think that what it's done is changed the center of gravity for the campus uh, and moved it closer to the Reedy Branch Goez Center area 
which uh, I think is good to disperse that, that population across the broader area, but we need to work further at that. Commissioner Webb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just got a comment, and uh, I'll just have a comment. <laughs> and, um, and that is thank you for your response on this to the community. I was down in Aden recently and found out that Pitt Community College has responded by having classes for people to earn their GEDs down in Aden and went, because the college found out people were actually walking from Aden all the way to Pitt Community College. And it was more than just a few. There were several people walking all the way up Highway 11 to further their education and, and get the basics so that they can move on to the certificate programs and maybe degree programs and, and fill some of these jobs that we have a skills gap in. So I appreciate your response. Well, there. thank you. We're working with uh, Adam Smith and the mayor there to expand offerings. Uh, we're part of a block grant proposal that has been made. One of the challenges in the uh, old Aiden High School is to get uh, ADA uh, accessibility to the second floor. But we're doing some programming right there now, and we hope to do even more. Any other questions? Let me say I appreciate you coming before us this evening. We as a board appreciate that. We appreciate all that you and your organization are doing for our county and our region. You are a great asset to our community, and we have a great deal of value and appreciation for all that you're doing out there. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and I know you've had a uh, long, intense day, so thank you for working me into your agenda. Thank you for coming. Uh, do I have a motion that we approve our consent I agenda? Say please. Second. Uh, let's vote. Thank you. Okay, the uh, next item on our agenda is an item for decision. It's a budget amendment from our Sheriff's Department for a temporary and part-time salaried uh, person, and the funding for this will come from the over-collection of concealed weapons permit. Uh, Sheriff, would you like to uh, present that? Good afternoon. Thank you. And I think your opening comment pretty much explained where we're at. Um, due to our budget cut last year, we lost a position, which was a clerk position. And so therefore, um, we thought we could be able to handle the workload at the front desk. But uh, due to the increase of gun permits, um, and I'm passing out a, a, a status of where we're at on our gun permits. But due to the increase of gun permits we've had this year, we're just not able to keep the workload up. <clears throat> um, and to give you some idea about the process of a gun permit, basically we have to run criminal histories, we have to run DMV checks, Office of Administrative Court checks, Federal National Index checks, NCWARE and OSSI just on a basic permit. And then we have to do our mental health checks as well. But if the uh, figures here show you in the blue, yellow, and <clears throat> green, we'll just basically touch on that. Then I'll see if you got any questions about it. Um, our projected revenue for this year in concealed carry and purchase permit was 61000 so far, year to date, we've done 74,000, and our projected uh, revenue for that is $117,500. And what we're asking for is additional funds in this year's budget to fund a part-time position. And in next year's budget, we're going to be asking for a full-time position to cover that, because the need is definitely there. We just can't handle the workload. Any given day, when we do gun permits, we have 15 to 20 people standing in line uh, waiting for their gun permit. And we want to be able to provide the citizens the service they expect out of the sheriff's office on these permits. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval of the budget amendment. Second. Motion, second? Second. Any questions? Let's vote. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda will be, pres will be presented by Brian Evans, and this is uh, the Agricultural Voluntary Advisory Board has uh, recommended that we issue a fee or approve a fee, and Mr. Evans will explain that to us. Yes, sir. Commissioners, thank you for this opportunity to present on behalf of the Agricultural Advisory Board, in which our <laughs> department provides administrative support for. And that board is requesting approval to collect a $70 fee uh, from participants who are enrolling in the Pitt County Agricultural uh, Voluntary Agricultural District Program, which will become effective March the 1st, 2013. Um, the board is asking for approval at this time 
to make sure that there's continuity for future applicants instead of waiting for a new budget year. And um, the fee basically covers the cost of the sign, which will go up to knowledge that people are enrolled in the BAD or the Voluntary Act District. Um, if additional signs are requested, then $70 will be collected per sign to cover that cost, to, again, to ma maintain the um, sustainability of that program. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the fee. Is that question? Motion. Second. Any questions? I don't have a question, but just to uh, state that the person who is choosing to sign on, when they pay that seventy dollars, that'll be for their sign. Yes, ma'am. On their property. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And that's Thank you. a volunteer basis, also. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have. Uh, Appointments to our Board of Equalization and Review, I believe there are four of them. Uh, and we also need to appoint the chairperson also. Let's do that in two steps. Let's have a motion to, if, it, if this is your desire, to reappoint the four, uh, Andy Piner, Jeremy King, Joe Shambly, and John Shepard. So, so second. Motion, second. Uh, second. Second. Make sure that there's two that has missed more than half of their meetings. You saw that, of course. Yes, and know. one of them is explained as medical condition. Oh, no, that was another one. If you look at it, you'll find that two of them miss more meetings than they attended. As long as they are going to strive to take and to improve their attendance, I think we, that ought to be there. Look at it. You'll see what I'm talking about. I understand. Okay. I support it, I mean, but I think that's what our policy is, what we're trying to. And I appreciate our secretary sending those letters out, too. I thought it was very good. Okay. Do. Okay, let's clear the board so we can vote on Okay. I vote on And I agree with you, Mr. James. Everyone... <laughs> that agrees to serve on any board or committee uh, for the county should commit to attend the meetings. And uh, That's right. hopefully these four, these four have agreed to be reappointed, so I would assume they're also agreeing that they're going to attend the meetings. Good. Uh, there's another action there. We need to appoint the chairperson. Now, this committee is recommending that we continue, that we reappoint Jeremy King as chairperson if this is the desire. Then I will entertain a motion. If not, so move, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Let's vote. That one attended. Okay. Uh, thank you. The next item is an appointment to the EMS Oversight Committee. Uh, this is being recommended by the EMS Ob Oversight Committee that we appoint Dr. Ferguson, who will replace uh, Dr. March on that committee as medical director. Do I have a motion? I so move. Second. Let's vote. Thank you. We have a... Uh, Thank you. We have uh, our next appointments is to uh, Vidant Health Center. We have two reappointments, Ralph Hall and Dr. Albernaz. Do I have a motion that so we reappoint those two? So Mr. Chairman, I so move. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Let's vote on that. Now we have to uh, appoint someone to replace Dr. Janet Bullock, who is rotating off. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, if I might, uh, I serve on the uh, Vidant uh, Health Board, and uh, the Board of Trustees and the Chairman uh, did some extensive studies on this, and uh, uh, Dr. Janet Bullock, who is a black female, is uh, uh, is is going off the board after serving uh, admirably for for ten years, and uh, we are trying to be reflective of the community that we serve. Uh, the board the chairman and the board of trustees, and I'm a voting member of that board, and I'm very proud to serve on it. Recommended that Bernita Dembry replace Dr. Bullock. And uh, so I, I, I like to uh, continue on with that recommendation and recommend that Doc, uh, that Bernita Dembry will replace Dr. Bullock. And it's, uh, incidentally, she has an ad 
in the newspaper, well, not a, a, a write-up in the newspaper uh, today, the city of Green will honor for excellence in budgeting for four straight years and under uh, Mrs. Uh, Demery leadership. So a very capable lady in keeping with uh, her leaving, Dr. Bullock leaving, and, and certainly uh, Mrs. Emery, Demery is a black a female to replace her. I recommend that we do that. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. like to make a nomination, please. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, have the board consider the nomination of Dr. Shirley Carraway, who okay. has also applied. Is there any other nominations for this position? Okay, we have two. We will start with the one se nominated second. She will be first, right? That's correct. You've got in reverse order, so your first vote would be for Shirley Carraway. Okay. Are uh, all of those in favor of uh, nominating and appointing Shirley Carraway, please vote. Mr. James. What do you mean? Voting for Shirley Carraway. For I'm, I, I, I didn't. You haven't voted on the. Well, I'm not going to vote for. I'm voting for. I that. mean, vote for somebody. You've got to vote for. yes or no. Oh, is it, is that on there? <laughs> I'll vote no. I still don't know what I'm doing. I want to vote no. Hit no, we'll and then confirm. Oh yeah, now I see. I can vote Very no. Good. Yes, okay. Can. That vote passes. So we will move on to the next item. And the next item, I believe, is a closed session. And, Madam Attorney, will you take us into closed session? I will. It has been suggested that this board go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A5 um, to establish or instruct the public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body in negotiating the price or other material terms of the contract or proposed contract for the acquisition of real property by purchase, option, exchange, or lease, and also under 143.318.11A1 to prevent the disclosure of confidential information. I have a motion. We go into closed session. Okay, let's vote. Okay, we are now in closed session. We'll wait a few moments for the room to clear before we start. Welcome back. We have completed our closed session, and we have one uh, action item that we need to take care of. Mr. Webb? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes as to the content only for the February 4th, 2013 closed session. I have a second. 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 Let's vote. Mr. James and Mr. Hamlet, if y'all want to go, let's vote. It confirmed. Okay, thank you. We will now have Commissioner comments. Uh, Commissioner Webb. Thank you, and I believe you allotted me two hours for this, and I'll try. Uh, to motion to adjourn. Send <laughs> <laughs> hey. me. Uh, just real quick, uh, update. Well, Mr. McGlawhorn and I attended the ABC board meeting today. Everything's on track. The payouts look good. The sales are good. Uh, everything's solid, and and we're hitting targets, and, and uh, that's good for us. On um, Tuesday uh, or tomorrow, I will meet directly with the governor, the Speaker of the House, and the President of the Senate at separate times as part of the Association of Commissioners Executive Committee where we'll be pushing our county goals as well as our, our pet county goals directly with, with them. And uh, Commissioner McLaughlin and I will also attend the Board of Directors meeting on Wednesday uh, taking place in Raleigh for the Association of Commissioners. And just on a last note, uh, I have a constituent that's turning 102 on the 28th. She probably has, at 101 years old, a lot better things to do than watch this tonight, but maybe someone will tell her about it. But a happy birthday to Nancy Morgan of Grifton, who will turn 102 in a week. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner McGowan. No comments. Commissioner Johnson. No comments. Commissioner Owens. Good report, Mr. Will. Thank you. No comment. No comment. No comment. No comment. No comment. No Motion Still to have adjourn. An hour and 58 minutes. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Who Let's vote. Everybody can leave except Commissioner Webb. He can stay another hour. <laughs> 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 <laughs>